Welcome to the Riot Podcast. Welcome to your Monday. Hopefully everybody had a good weekend. Today, Isaiah's here. Today's the last day without Hudson, so mm-hmm. he will return tomorrow. And we even got to talk about him a little bit on the show today <laughs> and how if you saw him on our Instagram page... <laughs> You may not even know if it was him <laughs> or who it was because he didn't even put like, hey, it's Hudson and I'm in Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, wherever, you know, wherever he's at right now. I and still think it would have been funny if you were like a casual follower of Radio U on Instagram. Like, yeah. hey, you know, we got, got a lot of followers if we do an interview with a band or something. But like they don't know maybe what Hudson looks like. And yes. it's like, who's this guy having vacation on Radio U's Instagram stories? Yeah, I wish I wish you would have gotten like a direct message or something like who is this like post uh, yeah. you guys have someone posting on your account yeah. like his vacation photos i don't know if you know this or not but it's been fun to watch so i uh you know isaiah's filling in for this show that you'll hear today and then hudson returns tomorrow with a lot of tales from his vacation in gatlinburg and pigeon forge and possibly some surprises for us we can only hope I know. hopefully some surprises or gifts please, or please food tell he brought us something back yeah, i told him to bring back some coffee or like some sort of snack thing sort of souvenir you we'll know we'll see what happens but until then you at least can enjoy this podcast. Yeah, we talked about that. We also talked about how some people just have things that we'll never have. And one person even has ice cream in his home that I just can't even imagine being able to afford. <laughs> we can't afford the maintenance, let no, alone the machine itself. Let alone the machine. So some people just live a completely different lifestyle from us that I can't even begin to comprehend. Now, Isaiah, we need to be thankful for what we have, too. You're right, you're right. But I would like to have what this guy has, too. <laughs> as much as I love what I have, I wouldn't be a, like opposed to also having other things you're right. that also sound nice. Lord, do you hear that? Yeah, exactly. Do you hear <laughs> Are that? Are you like, listening? I'm very appreciative for what I have, but if you're willing, I I'm, wouldn't mind having some other things. I'm thankful and grateful. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, but I like ice cream. Yeah, but I just love ice cream, too. Uh, we also talk about... How football season is back and the preseason got even more heated than it even should ever get heated. If you're a Steelers fan or even Lions, the Detroit Lions, um, it, there was there was more going on in the stands. <laughs> yeah. If you're a fan of those teams, then your fellow fans are not representing you that's, guys that's very well. It. That's it. <laughs> uh, we also talk about how we literally have superheroes living among us. Oh. Because some people can just get by with very, very little sleep and actually be productive, which is a skill that I've never learned how to do. <laughs> so you'll find out the term for it, and then you can hear if if that's you, or if not, if you're tired, that's not you. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's either You're either it or you're pretending to be it, and that's there's it. no other way. <laughs> well, Hudson returns tomorrow. Make sure you text and say hi, 877-2-RADIO-U. Uh, put your name and that you're a podcast listener so we can say hi to you in the next podcast. And again, thanks so much for listening to the podcast today, and thank you, Isaiah, for filling in of course see you guys yeah (laughs) you were one of the lucky few who missed the riot when they were live yet here you are i also like to live dangerously this is the worst of the riot podcast so jeff bezos lives a lifestyle that we will just never even be able to understand so on this one he has a new thing in his house that Almost doesn't even make sense to have inside of your house, but he has a soft serve ice cream machine. And how I'm picturing this is just on his wall, kind of built in. It's just a little handle. And he can just have soft serve, I guess, whenever he wants. But he installed it in his house, and it's just one more thing that the rest of us will just never have. We'll never understand. It looks like um, it looks like just a soft serve like yogurt ice cream machine. Um, they say it's kind of designed like a, it looks like an ice cream truck, but it's just a smaller scale. And it's right there on his wall, and he is the first customer to have a soft serve ice cream machine in his house. It looks like it serves three flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and then also a chocolate vanilla twist Ooh. as well. So this brings me to the question of if you could have anything in your house, what would you have? Well, a soft serve would be good. <laughs> that would be nice. That's a pretty good answer, I didn't right? I think that was one, but um, I think probably a lot of us might want like a, a coffee machine of some yeah. sort or a soda machine. See, I like think, a freestyle. Yeah, freestyle. So that'd be like one of the big Coca Cola yep, ones. Yep. That'd be a good one. I I think I'd want like a. Like a deep fryer, you know, somebody Ooh. can make like fried pickles and like deep fried Oreos. I don't want something like that. I don't know how that would work. <laughs> I also want someone to make it for me too. So maybe we don't want like, because you can have a deep fryer like now, but you yeah. want like a robotic 
I want something that can just do it for machine me. Machine that will know everything and yeah, prep it exactly. all. And, and perhaps an assistant that goes with of it. Of course. And that I can just sit on my couch and they'll just serve it to me as well. Oh my gosh. It sounds so nice, doesn't it? It sounds so nice. Just have just disposable money that you just don't care about. So you can just buy soft serve ice cream machines, put them in your house and just kind of do whatever you want every single day. What's probably the worst is sometimes when you're so wealthy, I bet he didn't even pay for it. You know, no. just the press alone of him being the first one who has it in his house. He exactly. Was probably given to it was probably given to him and I bet you they maintenance it for Yeah, free. they probably do. And that's what you think about they like they want him to have it just so that they can advertise it as something else to to be able to sell. And so when you get to that point where just money doesn't even matter anymore yeah. because you have so much of it, it's just a whole other ball game that I just won't ever be able to comprehend, I don't think. Well, I think at this point when we we were we were like, "Oh, Jeff Bezos has a lot of money. That's great. I wish, I wish, I wish." But yeah. When we start throwing in the soft serve and all that stuff, now it's just jealousy. Now it's just getting personal, it's you know? It's absolute jealousy. We start uh, having the things we really want, you yeah, know? Yeah, especially because you say you like ice cream every night. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine if the ice cream was already just, just always there? Pull the handle. It was soft and You would delicious. never have to go to the store anymore, mm-hmm. and it's just always sitting there. I don't know. Maybe after a while you get sick of it, you know? Uh, yeah, but that's fine to find out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'd love to be at that point. So if you, if there's anything you can think that we're not thinking of that might be a better addition to your lifestyle, if you had anything installed in your yeah. house outside of soft serve, or like we said, even a, a soda machine would be really nice, uh, text it in at 877-2-RADIO-U. We won't make it happen, but it'll be nice <laughs> to talk about it. Hudson sees the glass is half empty. But get this. He thinks a glass half empty is good. The Riot. Radio U. You've got Free Guy and Paw Patrol that are taking over the top of it, right? <laughs> you know, it's a it's a stunning uh, movie that- weekend when it's like, what do you have in Paw Patrol? Exactly. That's why I, when I read this, I didn't even know that there was a Paw Patrol movie. Yeah. Well, I didn't even know that was a thing because they were like, Paw Patrol comes in at number two. I was like, the show? I don't even know if you were the target, so yeah, I, I, I I'm not too surprised if you didn't see that. I don't think they care if I know that there's a Paw Patrol movie because they don't care if, I'm, if I come to it or not. <laughs> they just want to know if Free Guy or any of the others were on your radar. But, yeah. Uh, for Free Guy, it was, uh, that's the Ryan Reynolds one. Um, it's its second weekend, I think, and yep. it has the best second week hold um, or like what they call the smallest drop off of any film released since Memorial Day weekend. Which is pretty darn impressive. It's very impressive. Are you, how do you feel about the Free Guy movie? Do you want to see it? No, I am just not into, if it's not like, how do I want to phrase it? It's ridiculous is not the word, but like, I just want to watch just dumb stuff on Netflix. Gotcha. And Amazon and, and all the other stuff. Like it doesn't have to be new. It doesn't have to be popular. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want any, uh, you know, things on Like, I don't have to want to watch this. Yeah. I don't have to go to a theater for it. I've really gotten real lazy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my watching, though. Doesn't matter if it's from 1996. Then, like, as long care. as it's good, it doesn't really care. matter. It yeah. can be old. See, yeah. I didn't think at first I'd want to see it, but now I kind of do. I don't know why, but I kind of want to see it now, but I don't want to go to the movie theater to see it. <laughs> I'm not some that committed. Just, some people just want to go and see something, yeah. but um, it, it still doesn't have great numbers. So Free Guy made $18.8 million. Paw Patrol <laughs> made $13 million. Uh, So Isaiah might see that. We'll see. Now, now Paw Patrol uh, is kind of piquing my interest. Like, I know, maybe right? I go in the movie theater and see this. What's I don't know. Score? How many tomatoes does it have? Yeah, I know. Exactly. That's what I, when I saw that pop up, I was like, Paw Patrol, huh? I was like, they, <laughs> they're just making, they're making movies about anything nowadays. I anything. Know. Well, watch it bring in way more money, like long oh, yeah. haul and stuff. Uh, Jungle Cruise was $6.2 million. So again, these are still lower numbers than theater stuff would expect over the weekend. Yeah. Don't Breathe. Two five point one million and respect at three point eight million. A lot of my friends said that Jungle Cruise is really good. Did they? They said they really liked it because it's on Disney Plus, so you can you can but see. But you have it on to there. pay the premium price. The premium price. Is it premium worthy? I don't know if it's definitely not premium well, get, worthy. Ask Nothing friends, is worth buying. I don't think anymore. <laughs> just wait. Ask your friends again. Yeah. Because I just want to make sure that they understand the question. Yeah. Is, is, is it, it worth actually paying for? That's a different question than being like, can we watch it? Like watching it for free is one thing. And and since don't don't your parents still pay for your Disney Plus? Maybe I can just charge it to I know. them. <laughs> Are, do you want to ask them if they're okay with it? I don't know if asking. You know, I'd rather ask for forgiveness than permission. You know, <laughs> if you want.
want to figure out later if uh, if they forgive you if you order it or if you want to ask like um, uh, if more people can share in your login. Or... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just How many people can we too? get in here, right? Yeah, like, I mean, we're all family, aren't we? But that was the box office for the weekend. So Free Guy, uh, it performed pretty good. I mean, this is The Riot. Radio U. Perfect way to introduce uh, this story. Yeah, I'd say uh, Mike <laughs> Richards has been from the highest of highs <laughs> to just the lowest of lows in a matter of like uh, nine days. Man, if you would have told us a year or two ago that Jeopardy would be all people would talk about yeah, I know. in 2021, I would have said, nah. uh No but... chance. How is Jeopardy going to be like the top story for like a couple weeks mm-hmm. at the same time? But Mike Rich- Richards is done after just nine days on the job due to some details coming out of what he had previously said on a podcast. He was uh, said some uh, disparaging things in 2013, 2014. He has some, I think, some lawsuits against him from Price is Right stuff when he was yep. the executive producer of that. There's a lot of stuff. You don't even know this, Isaiah, but like Hudson and I off air last week and ever since he was announced, we would talk off air like, how's this guy like Who is sliding this guy? through on all this stuff? Because Jeopardy image to me is you know an older crowd yeah i know a lot of people got very vocal about who they wanted the new host to be but those aren't people i think who are still gonna watch it yeah uh but when he was named as the permanent host on august 11th the mike richards guy uh we're like well wait he's got a lot of a lot of skeletons in the closet there. You think, too, like, it's not like they didn't know that. So, like, right. you think that they, they had to do, I mean, so for something like this, you have to do so much stuff for their background mm-hmm. just to make sure, like, you aren't bringing in someone controversial. And they still hired someone controversial. Like, it was, there was no avoiding it. So, I don't know why they would even take the risk in the first place. Now, he's still staying, though, as the producer. Yep. So, he's still staying that. He's just not going to be the host of it. Um, so they started taping August 19th. So last week with yeah. Mike Richards, they taped one show and then that was it. That was all they did because, and they have <laughs> to air it too. Yeah. Well, do they have to, do you think? That's what they said. They said they oh. have to air it because of the, um, the p- participants going from round to round. So oh, if they don't right. air that episode, then you won't know who won that episode. Hopefully so, in the, the episode, you didn't say like, I'm the new host. Yeah. <laughs> My first day on the job. I'm so excited to be here. And you know? that's it. So I guess what they're going to do is they're going to start uh, a new round of guest hosts. So I know everybody still likes the whole LeVar Burton thing. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't seem like they're wanting to pull from anyone that had been tested already. Really? So they're going to just do a, they're going to do a clean wipe of everybody and just start a new, well, I guess? Otherwise, why would they do new guest hosts? Unless it's just to get some True. more time. And I, don't I think know. they they kind of burned the bridge with everybody yeah, else. Yeah, let's say everybody else is probably upset. They're like, "You really picked that guy over me?" Like, they probably don't even want at this point. They're probably done with it now. Yeah. So for Jeopardy, that was the huge news on Friday. Because again, who cares about Jeopardy? Yeah, exactly. Like, it's just so much drama. Yeah, there's um, too much drama for such such an old time TV show. You yeah. know. Yeah. So on Friday, they announced that Mike Richards is still staying on as the executive producer, but he will not be hosting it. Uh, some are still saying for the Mayim Bialik, she's the one yep. who's doing the primetime special. Uh, there's also some people saying that she should not. I saw that too. I I think they should just pick one person and call it a day. Yeah, exactly. And just try to put this all behind them as quickly as they possibly can. Yeah. Or honestly, I feel like maybe they should take the show off for just a couple of months yeah, exactly. and then take come back and rebrand. But yeah. uh, they're still going to try. So they don't have any details on who might be the new testing like hosts. Uh, but some new people are available. If you're looking for hot takes on the day's most important news stories, uh, you're in the wrong place. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. All I saw yesterday was just the Steelers and something about a massive fight between a couple of people, and that was all in the news yesterday. Well, you know football is back when you just hear fighting happening again, and it's never the players. It's always the people in the stands. It's always in the stands. Well, I think everybody's riled up, and I don't know, maybe you haven't been out in a while, and we've forgotten our non-fighting skills. And uh, This, though, if you watch the video, it's bad. It's, this, is a, this is a tough one to watch because it was a it was a couple and then another man, and the, the couple were arguing, um, and then the other man got into their argument and then all of a sudden 
the woman hit the other man, and then the man is trying to punch the guy, and then the dude gets knocked out, and everybody's just going crazy. And it's weird because he gets knocked out. If, if you've seen someone like in a fight and they go all like stiff, oh yeah, you're like, are you alive? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is he dead? Like, is he dead? Did you just do that? But yeah, exactly. It really seemed. It, we weren't there. Don't know. No. Doesn't doesn't mean we know. Uh, but it seemed like uh, the woman was uh, a bit of an instigator. Yeah, in she that. was definitely in it. Like, it, <laughs> well, from what we saw, and we don't know the story, but she looked like she was being a bit aggressive, ah. and and uh, she was the first one to lay hands on the other person. Ah, so this was the preseason Steelers and Lions game. It was at uh, Heinz Field, so that would be Pittsburgh. Yeah, it was. It looked like it was a pair. It was a bunch of Pittsburgh fans. It looked like, but at the same same time like it's the preseason like can't we like at least get the regular season going when like it really matters like what? nothing matters that much in the preseason are, are you saying Isaiah you want the fights to be during a bigger game yeah, it has to be during a bigger game like why do you care so much like even if you're losing in the preseason that means nothing nobody should be upset at a preseason game just go there enjoy the food the atmosphere if it's a regular season game and your team's getting their butt kicked all right that's different but I doubt well we don't even know if it was about the game it, 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 very, it probably wasn't even about the game I I bet you it was either the game, it was something with masks, the vaccine, yes. uh, the president, or yeah. what else could there be? Uh, you said something about my girl, yeah, something, something like, that. like that. Like it feels like it was about something else, and it just happened to be at a football game. And it just the football game was just going on in the background. I wish there had been like a touchdown score while it was happening or something, <laughs> just to show how little it actually had to do with the game. Well, let's see. Uh, okay, so here's some more details. They said the man in the hat, who ended up being the guy who punched the. Uh, the other guy. I mean, it's, it's hard when you don't yeah, know exactly. like, all the relationships. We don't have names or anything. But. I know. Uh, so let's see. The man in the white shirt then pushed the woman because she had hit him. Um, they just still don't say there was just a lot of pushing. Oh, someone got kicked with their shoe. Aww. It oh, doesn't say the why. Involved. It doesn't say where or how this started, but that was it. So if you saw yesterday the video from the Steelers game, this is the one. Yeah, this is this is a pretty. This wasn't a terrible fight, but at the same time, when somebody gets knocked out, that really takes it up a couple levels. I think if he wouldn't have gotten knocked out, then it wouldn't have been as bad. But when sure. you see him go down, whew, well, do it looks you, pretty tough. Is there like a is there like a nurse station at the stadium? I don't do you know words. There's got to be the, somebody, right? Do you go to urgent care? Or like, like what do you do? Checked in with it, the doctor. They have to have someone there in case like an emergency happens. But I don't even know. I think they all just get kicked out. They're just like, you know what? Figure it out. You're all adults. <laughs> Figure it out amongst yourselves, okay? If you missed out on the next riot moment when it originally aired, you don't know how lucky you are. You're listening to the worst of the riot podcast. So the first thing I said on the show today was that I feel fantastic today. But I said that because I have to tell myself that I'm not <laughs> tired every single morning. And that's what I feel like this story is here. Are you lying to yourself? I think you have to because it's called short sleeper syndrome. And it's why some people can sleep like six hours or four, four hours a night and feel completely perfectly fine the next day, which I don't believe for three seconds. So when I first saw this article, I thought, OK, I must have because I sleep about five and a half hours a night. Yeah. But I don't have short sleeper syndrome because if you do and you slept that little, they said you would not be tired during the daytime. So it's like a condition where you can just live on less sleep than everybody else. Dude, we're exhausted. So exactly. I, we I come in every this. day so tired. Yeah. Like I'm, I, I try to sleep. I usually go to bed so that I can get between like six and seven hours of sleep every night. But we're supposed to get eight. Yeah, I know. Isn't and I, that weird? And I love getting eight hours of sleep. That's always the goal is like, I'm going to get eight hours of sleep. But if I want to get eight hours of sleep, I have to go to bed at like 845. I know. You just can't. There's, There's no chance hours. that is ever going to happen for me. That's why ever. You, you got to start taking naps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, so if you have short sleeper syndrome, um, there are people that are perfectly fine with it's the five to six hour mark sometimes even like four and a half uh but they do not need the following day to find out if you have this syndrome uh, you don't need any like caffeine so you don't need like any energy boosters you you're not moody <laughs> like you're not angry you're not cranky uh, you can manage on that small amount of sleep and be perfectly fine if you have this then you are literally a superhero because think of all <laughs> the things you can get done if I only had to get four hours of sleep like every single night I could get so much done during the day because I feel like I spend so much more time sleeping than these super 
for humans that apparently don't have to even barely sleep. It's not a lot of people, though. It's very small percentage. Uh, it's like uh, they have other terms for it. Habitual short sleeper and HSS. A natural sort, uh, short sleeper, which is an NSS. And if you're consistently sleeping six hours or less and you feel fully functional the next day, then you are a short sleeper syndrome person. I feel like you're either on like one side where like, oh, if I don't get enough sleep, like mm-hmm. I am like so tired. Or you're the person that's like telling yourself, oh, I don't have to sleep that much and I'll be perfectly fine. And then the next day you just continue to lie to yourself the whole day and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm fine. You know, I don't need any more sleep and stuff. I'm just going to power through it. But they might start saying like, oh, no, I have short sleeper syndrome. Like I only have to get like four <laughs> hours of sleep. It's well, not a big deal. We don't because we need sleep and we're very tired. They also say that if you if you have this, then you you might also have what they say is hypomania, impulsivity, and high reward drive. So because you're a short sleeper, they say that you tend to engage in stimulating activities the next day that allow you to override your sleepiness. So like you don't even know that you're doing it, but basically they say your mind is always going. You're always trying to do something. You're always going for the risk, you know, high oh, risk yeah. stuff. And your body is compensating for not having enough sleep by being so highly energized. Okay, that makes sense. And so if you like if you're doing like high energy stuff the mm-hmm. next day to where like your mind doesn't even like it's trying to like to push away the being tiredness by doing things that are a little bit riskier than yes, the ever, exactly. than the everyday person. But you don't know that you're doing it. So she's like, "Oh, that makes that's crazy." That's just how you are. You're just like, "Hey, uh, you're just uh, a go-getter." It's a personality changer. <laughs> it if you is. don't if you get less sleep the next day, you're like, "You know, I need to take this risk." To wake my body up. Mm-hmm. That's that's crazy. So if you are a short sleeper, then that's about you. Again, when I first saw this, I thought, hey, I short sleep. But no, I'm exhausted. I'm tired the next day, which means I don't have this syndrome. I'm just not getting enough sleep. The worst podcast with the best listeners. This is the worst of the riot podcast. This one, Shikari Richardson, the big name right before the Olympics. She didn't get to compete. And then, but she got to compete uh, this past weekend and it did not go how she wanted it to. She's the whatsoever. one that had the positive drug test right before the Tokyo Olympics. And she was back to do a, another event, which included all three of the Olympic medalists from the 100 meter dash from yes. Tokyo. So they were all in the same so race all, together. Yeah, that was it was her chance to kind of prove yeah. that she was a, like she should have been at the Olympics and had she been there the USA would have done better because she was running her race which was the 100 meter dash that she had just put out an incredible time before the Olympics. I think it was the sixth like fastest ever mm-hmm. and then she got to race against all these fellow Olympians and she came in the last place. It was bad. It was uh, not the performance that she wanted. What was also just bad is people were so mean to her oh, over the yeah. weekend. But because they say that, and and I maybe agree a bit, she was very overly confident. Yes. And sometimes when you're overly confident, you can do it in a mean way. Yes. <laughs> You know, confidence is good to have, yeah. but you got to watch how you have it. Uh, and so then uh, because she was in such last place, uh, they were mean over the weekend. Yeah, she because she was tweeting out like during the Olympics and stuff. She was kind of on Twitter with the Twitter fingers going saying like, mm-hmm. I should be there. Like if I was there, then maybe it'd go a little bit differently for the USA and all this stuff. But she got to realize that these Olympians are no joke. Mm-hmm. Like it, I, You're the fastest or whatever in the USA, but... There's people that are much faster than some of the people mm-hmm. in the USA. And it had been other a month since she had done an event. Yeah. And so uh, ended up first, second, and third went to the same people who did first, second, and third in this race at the Olympics. Yes. And, so it and mimicked it was, that. And it was the the woman who, who got first place, which was Elaine Thompson Hera, ran the second fastest time ever oh, in the awesome. event. So she was Good super fast. And the other thing that's crazy is like if I asked you today or like anyone, what would you know about the 100 meter dash that happened this past weekend or last week? You would know that Shikari Richardson got last place, but you wouldn't be able to tell me that Elaine Thompson Hera ran the second fastest That's time insane. ever, and you wouldn't be able to tell me who came in fifth place or fourth place or seventh place. It overshadowed it. Yeah, definitely. And, and it was funny, too, because they kept on posting like that she came in ninth place, <laughs> but even then, that's that's last place. Sure, that's, yeah. That's, that's last. <laughs> they didn't want to focus on the yeah. negative term yeah, of that. Yeah, she came in ninth, and then everybody was in the comments like, isn't there only nine? Like, Ever? isn't it just ninth? Like, she just came in last place. So that so, was uh, Shikari Richardson from the event. I think she skipped out on the other race then. She stopped. Yep. And she said, this last month was a journey for me, but that's no excuse. Because, I mean, 
guys, like, she's still super fast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> didn't work out for her. She says, at the end of the day, I'm an athlete. Today was a day, but it's not every day. It's not the end of the day of the world. Like I say, if you count me out, joke's on you. Yeah, she said, I'm not done, and she's going to continue to run, obviously. And I'm sure she'll bounce back and have better performances in the future. But, you know, it just wasn't her day. That happens sometimes. You just don't have the day that you want to have. And, you know, she'll come back and work a little harder, and then you'll be faster. Just hard when, if you're on your journey, yeah. <laughs> you know, and you're trying to get back into it, and uh, everybody, she became like the joke of the internet over the, the weekend. Yeah, if this had happened to her like three months ago, it wouldn't have been a big deal at all. But since she did have prior success, yeah. and then the controversy, Aww. and then now the bad performance, it makes it a little bit harder. Even if you don't like someone, guys, we got to just be nicer online to people. I know well, it's and- tempting, and sometimes they give you the ammunition. Why pay for so many streaming services that you don't really care about? When you can not really care about the riot for free. Radio U. Well, you'll enjoy this one because sometimes you just want to go fast, you know? You just want to go fast. (laughs) And this California car dealership, they let a customer trade in the Corvette that they owned because when they brought it in for just a routine little spark plug replace, the mechanic that was working on the car did probably one of the worst things he could possibly do at his job. You would think he would have known what would happen, but he tried. He did it. He he went ahead and just took the car for a little bit of a little race, just a little race down the highway. And the car, since it was brand new, has a little camera in it Mm -hmm. that shows how fast he's going and just has a whole video of what he did. And he took that thing on the highway and he took that thing up to 150 miles per hour. 150 miles per hour that isn't even his car. What was he thinking? He did a street race with a Dodge Charger. And it has a mode uh, that's called the Performance Data Recorder. I don't think, Isaiah, our cars have this. No, I think you could get uh, away with it if it was my truck. I, <laughs> I think we wouldn't even know if uh, a mechanic no, took you have our no cars idea. out. You're like, oh, I think that's my car. Uh, but it's a valet mode feature. So, like, maybe when you turn your car in or valet it, also yeah. not something we do frequently. Exactly. It recorded the entire thing. So, that's how the guy, the owner, found out. And the owner of the car dealership where the mechanic was said he felt bad and wanted to do the right thing. So now they're um, leveling up to the 2022 model. Yeah, the brand new one. We'll just give you a new car. Yeah, so he'll get the new Corvette and they're paying for taxes. But I I guess it doesn't say uh, if he has to turn in that Corvette. I assume he has to. You think they have to do like a trade, right? Like you guys get this one, just give me the new one. I like- think that so, but it doesn't say, um, but I'm going to... I'm going to say it does. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and just say <laughs> that he has to turn it in he or else that in really wouldn't one. be fair. But how funny would it be if you bought the uh, the race car? Like, that'd be funny. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. If you bought the one that had went up to 150 miles per hour because the mechanic took it out. But I think also if, they, if I turned my car in and, like, the mechanic was working on it, he wouldn't even want to be like, oh, man, maybe I should go street racing in this in this car. Well, he but had a with big this, truck. He's with, not going to. No. With this dude's car, he was like, okay, this is a little bit this is a little bit dangerous here. I feel like maybe this. This car, I want to take take street racing and go see how fast I can go, I guess. His was a 2021, a C8 Corvette. And I'm not sure. I'm trying to figure out how much, how much does that car cost? How much is that? I don't know. Like, you'd think, you'd think if you, the mechanic would know, like, what happens if he crashed? Well, Like, I think, what if he crashed the thing, you know? I don't know. Okay, he so wasn't it says, thinking. well, okay, this is expensive, but it's not as expensive as I thought. The base price is just like sixty thousand for the coupe version. Yeah. Uh, if you want the convertible one, you owe more. Total price. Okay, now it's better. Eighty three thousand. <laughs> so that's that's, that's a bit pricey. Big. That's pricier. I was yeah, gonna it's say. A lot. And then the initial fifty eight, like that's that's not as much as I thought this might be. Well, you also think about too. He probably has like decked out with like other things. You I know, all, all the, that. All the probably the windows are tinted. You know, it's a cool car, so I'm sure he's already put money into it anyway. If so not, it's probably worth more than that. His new one will because yeah, I'd be n- like, I'll take all the extras. Yeah, exactly. Oh, can you guys go ahead and just tint the windows and give me cool rims and is new tires, not, you know? I, I would assume you could have sued the dealership for for the mechanic for oh, doing yeah. that. Oh, that, yeah. That, there's no way that's allowed. They definitely could sue him and, and probably get close to how much money the car's worth anyway. Well, it looks nice. It's a nice looking car. So this guy gets a new one because the mechanic took his old one out and that got all caught on camera for the uh, dash camp stuff. It caught it all. And I assume the mechanic is probably looking for a new job. They won't say, but if you don't get fired for that, then... (laughs) 
Yeah, oh, you, that's like the biggest so, thing. That's, that's the number one thing. Possible. I know sometimes we're amazed when, you know, you read normally, no offense to teachers, but normally they're all, it's teachers who don't end up actually getting fired a whole lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you're like, well, wait, how? But they still keep their job. But for the mechanic, like, I don't know how you can no keep your way. job if you got caught doing that. That's like the number one rule. Like, you can't do that. The Riot promise is that they'll always have an opinion on everything they talk about. But that doesn't mean any of their opinions will make sense. This is The Riot on Radio U. Uh, So if you follow us on Radio U Official on Instagram, which I'll give you guys a moment if everybody wants to. Go ahead and click follow right now. Okay, good. All right, we're done. (laughs) Everybody following. Uh, You have noticed uh, Hudson's adventures because Isaiah is filling in for Hudson. Uh, Isaiah uh, Hudson's been going through Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Yes. Uh, And I didn't know if you, because you said you saw some of them. Mm -hmm. So he's been showing like some of his stuff he's been doing on vacation. But I was going to tell him when he came back, like, I think you guys like... Most of you only know us by our voices, but you don't know what we look like. Yeah. So I just think if you don't know who Hudson looks like. Those pictures. It just looks like, so, like who's having vacation yeah, on like, Radio <laughs> U's Instagram? Like, who is this? His family vacation is yeah. on Radio U's Instagram. It's, we're just like Hudson, like taking a picture of him, like with like a shark tank behind him and yes. stuff. And like all these pictures. Like, was, who is this guy? Like, who hacked the account? It's like, again, I think a lot do know who, like what Hudson looks like. But I, I think in the next time I'll tell him, like, contact of like, hey, I'm Hudson. Yeah. I'm on vacation. Hudson is like doing <laughs> yes, this or anything. It. Just put his name there at least once. Yep. Again, I think most of you realize like that's who that is. But just in case, that's Hudson going on vacation. Yeah. When you when you think about it too, I'm like, uh, what is he doing today? Is he doing more stuff today or is he coming back? I think he's, he's traveling back? back. I think what we've seen is it. I'm this not sure if we'll it. see anything else. Because that's why I was wondering because I know he's back tomorrow. So I didn't know if it's a decently far drive here today, mm-hmm. you know, so he had to... He had to come back, and so I know he'll be he'll be in the car for a while. Mm-hmm. That'll be a fun a fun adventure. And then tomorrow, I want him to uh, try to give us like a whole big bunch of photos. So we'll do yeah. one big posting again. Uh, follow Radio U Official on Instagram if you want to make sure to follow there to see it. I I don't know if he went on the way down or if back, but he was supposed to travel and try this place cookout. Yeah, it's to get in cookout. That was something. And he Bo- had a couple places. Where else he wanted? To, what else he wanted to do? Was Bojangles, it Bojangles? Which sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds horrible, <laughs> but it's a place. And then he wanted to get that ice cream, too, that we talked about on the show. He yeah, wanted to that get was the, in Gatlinburg. Yep, that so was in Gatlinburg. There. Well, I hope he has a safe trip back, um, but please follow his adventures and uh, send him a couple of messages. Thank him for sharing his vacation. For, he's not a big share of, of pictures, not. but he did really, he had to do good. I think he had. He knew that he had to put on a show this weekend because he, we always say like, Hudson, you need to get more pictures and stuff when you go out. So this weekend he did really good, though. He had lots of good photos. Yep. He just never said who he was. This is the Worst of the Riot podcast. Isaiah, uh, Carl just texted you a picture of his breakfast. Oh, it looks beautiful. And just a egg and bagel sandwich. Looks really good. But it sounds Carl, fantastic. You didn't know that leads nicely into our story uh, about uh, some egg problems uh, in certain parts of the United States, more specifically Massachusetts. Yeah, just like everything right now, there we're just taking turns with everything being a shortage. And so now it <laughs> went from pricey. bacon and now it's eggs. So your egg sandwich might be harder to come by or just more expensive because they looks like especially in Massachusetts they might soon experience an egg shortage. Are you an egg eater, Nikki? Do you like eggs? I do. I, I do. love eggs. So this is similar to when Isaiah said bacon. Uh, like it, for California, they have a new law I think that goes in effect starting the first of next year, where it's certain rules on how pigs are kept and yeah, the change for pig farmers and like. Um, making sure that they meet the qualifications to be able to sell it. And that means that bacon and stuff are just supposed to be so much more expensive starting at the first of the year. Be- they're trying to move to cage free, aren't they? Is that what they're trying well, to like make for more the animals be treated nicer? Is that the, is that the point of the law? More space. But yeah. then, you know, these places are not set up, you know, to them, they want more of the animals, which yeah. become the product. Yes. <laughs> so if you're like, well, what about eggs? Well, they're calling this Eggmageddon for Massachusetts because they're supposed to enact a new law, meaning that uh, all eggs sold in Massachusetts will have to come from 
cage-free hens and the law defining cage-free is a certain amount of space and not every egg producer meet meets those setups. Am I reading this right? Is this one and a half foot rule to where Square each, feet, yeah. each of them need a one and a half feet yep. inside of the barn, which I don't even know. It doesn't seem very, like very much room. Well, they don't even get that, I guess. Yeah, so <laughs> it sounds like they, they can't even get the one and a half foot rule in there and that seems kind of tight. I don't know if I could live within one and a half feet, but I'm uh, also not a chicken. You're not a chicken, but they did say that a a lot of places have adapted a um, an aviary approach to egg farming, which means they have like two levels that the hens and stuff can go up and down and kind of move yeah. a little bit more around. But that doesn't meet the rules because of the wording. Okay. So like even those egg places couldn't be okay with Massachusetts new rules starting in the thing. So like they're trying to rework some of this new law that's coming into effect. Eggs are like an important everyday thing that people need to well, like every single day, actually every single day, Jim, my dog, he <laughs> eats an egg. Oh, he so does? I have ah! he has an egg for a snack in the middle of every day. So if eggs start becoming more expensive, we might have to find a new snack. You're dog has an egg every day for a, he gets for a snack? an egg every single Please day. Please tell me you, you, do you cook it up or do you just give him the egg? Raw. Do you just give him the shell? straight raw. No, I don't give him the shell, but you can. Yeah. You can grind up the shell and it gives him like extra nutrients and stuff, but I just, I just crack it open. I toss Dude, the shell. I think you're even more of a dog owner than me. It, it, <laughs> he makes his coat real nice and Aww. he just loves it. When I like pull out like the eggs, yeah. he starts getting all yipped up. Oh, he's he super, knows. he's super happy and I just crack the egg in there. He slurps it up in like 15 seconds. Seconds. Well, for everybody else, though, everybody's just getting real bummed out of the fact that everything we buy and eat is just getting so much more I expensive. Know. And a lot of this is because of these changes in laws, and it really will start to take an effect at the beginning of next year. So if you like something, you should buy as much of it as you possibly can right now. You can't store eggs like you that. Gotta just, we, we, we're doing that thing again where we just buy a bunch of toilet paper just in case. You can't stockpile and eggs. And then you just stockpile everything that you possibly want because in a couple months from now, it seems like $10 more expensive. No, I know this. At the end, if it starts getting too expensive, we're going to Isaiah's house and we're taking your dog Jim's eggs. Yeah. That's enough of that. For more Riot content, head to riot.radiou.com.